Thank you, Jakub. Uh, so today I'm going to start with the euro dollar, and uh, as always, I'm going to speak for the weekly time frame first. So uh, first of all, what I see here is that the euro dollar have reached the upper uh, cap. Uh, of the range, of the locked range that we have here at 113.76 in the three weeks ago and now is moving downwards. Uh, we have penetrated the 50 moving average here. This is the 50 moving average and we're heading for the 50% level of the of the long term range. So over the weekly, um, I believe that we are on a downside uh, long term uh, way and moving to the low, lower ground. Let's see for the daily. In the daily Euro USD, we can see that uh, it's also, we can see the range in a bigger picture here and it's moving downward as well. Here we have reached the 61.8% of the last move, of the last up move from 1.717 to 1.1379. And uh, that is going, it's, it's strong support here, so it's, it's going to be a little bit risky on the daily to go on the short side. Let's see on the intraday uh, of the Euro USD. Um, again, we see that we are on a downtrend uh, below moving averages. Uh, and if we breach the 1.0989, which is also a psychological level, close to 1.10, uh, it could go to 1.0961. I think that we have a little bit room for a fast trade here on the intraday, but it's a bit risky because we are uh, at uh, we are at uh, a strong weekly and daily levels. Uh, nevertheless, the euro USD is mostly driven by fundamentals in the recent days. Uh, we saw the risk of the Brexit weighing on the Euro USD, and uh, also uh, it's, it has been extending in a range because of the US dollar weakness uh, in the last year. We have uh, US consumer confidence, which was uh, below expectations. Uh, actually, it was expected to be released at 97.4%, the US consumer confidence but it was released at 92.2. And also today, we have some uh, news for US as well, new home sales. And uh, no, and for tomorrow, we are looking at the US jobless claims. So um, there are some news for US dollar. Uh, we can go, we can have a short trade here if, uh, in my opinion, if the 1.0989 is uh, breached. Uh, the next one that I'm going to look is a GBP USD. Before you pass I'm the GBP USD, yeah. I just want to have addition to it. You know, I, I take a different uh, action uh, based on the, the yeah. analysis that I uh, I have been looking for. We are actually uh, from Fibonacci point of view, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually expecting a reversal from 1.0981 level, and that's a pending buy okay. limit order that I have for already a week now. Uh, so mm -hmm. I believe it's a it's a good level for the fact that it's 88% Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, I know you mm -hmm. don't have it uh, in general, uh, but it's a, it's a custom Fibonacci level, and uh, I'm okay. expecting it to touch that level, which is not too far from where we are now. It's basically yeah. another 10, uh, 10, 12 pips dip. Then we'll have this level triggered. And from there onwards, first we 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 need to have a, a trigger on. 1.11 level once again before we see another another dip. Well, this is, mm -hmm. this is my opinion. In the meantime, I would like to also ask you to close your market watch so that uh, your screen could become larger. Will you because we see that there is a psychological level at 1.10 and uh, some strong uh, support levels on daily and weekly. So, yeah, this is um, actually. Uh, a very possible scenario as well. Mm -hmm. However, if that is uh, broken, of course, we will we will see another round of uh, bearish development, mm -hmm. uh, at least aiming to 1.0770 as usual. You know, it, it has been already that, uh, 
within this level for more than a year almost. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah. we will see the consolidation on this level. But the likelihood is, uh, for now at least, that uh, we will see a reversal, a uh, temporary one, minimalistically. And uh, you, you can also yeah. see that there is a your moving average right there on daily time frame. Uh, yeah. That one. I don't know which one it is that you are you are having there, but uh, you know it's likely that it's going to touch it and reverse back there. Yeah, it, this is the 1.969. Mm -hmm. So now we're standing at 1.0988. Yeah. Yeah, it's very possible that this is going to. Happen. So here actually we have a strong support zone, if we can say that. So. And yeah, it can reverse and go up. It's a range zone, I, I can see. It's between basically 60, mm -hmm. uh, 0.965 and uh, 0.10, uh, 20 level more or less. This is a support mm -hmm. zone. Uh, and we can see yeah. strange movement, sideways, rangeway development overall on this pair. Mm -hmm. Let's pass on to okay. the pair. The next one that uh, I want to discuss about is a GBP USD. It has uh, also a bit similar uh, picture. Um, we see that on the weekly it has touched on a seven year low at 1.3962. So this is uh, also a strong support level on the weekly. Uh, we are far below the moving averages and downtrend prevails on the weekly. So on a long term perspective, we are bearish with um, a strong support level. So we may see a retracement in the lower time frame. So if we go on GBP USD daily, <coughs> we also see here that uh, we have a downtrend. There is a falling structure of the price uh, pattern. And uh, it has recently breached the support level at 148.84 yesterday. So that is giving a next target at 137.14, but in I have I keep in mind that we ha I have a strong support over the, the weekly time frame. Also we are lower than the Bollinger, the the prices are lower than the lower Bollinger bar. And that suggests that we are uh, oversold, but at the same time it's a bearish bearish signal. And on the hourly, if we look on the hourly, um, we see that there is um, again downtrend and there is by a bearish signals. We are below moving averages. And the, the, the British pound actually it's, uh, it has a lot of pressure from a Brexit uh, risk. Also yesterday, uh, Mark Carney said that uh, he is, if, he, if he sees any uh, weakening in the economy due to fears of a Brexit, he stands ready to lower the interest rates. And that is a dovish comment, adding extra weight on the, on the British pound. So um, I will expect during the intraday to see a retracement, but this is the, the GBP USD is uh, overall uh, bearish and um, in the medium term I will expect uh, the prices to go uh, lower than 139.63. Um, in the meantime we had uh, we had also a pending buy limit order for this pair uh, for last night which which was triggered it was at 1.3980 level. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that has been triggered uh, I repeat again, if you have entered that position, it's not a swing entry, uh, as we discussed in yesterday's uh, session. Mm -hmm. It was a it was an anti-trend, uh, mostly scalping-like positioning. To, uh, whenever such drops happen, basically we, we expect to see Fibonacci uh, 138.2 or 110 percent react. And each time the reaction takes place, we we see at least more or less 40 pips correction wave. So as we were shorting the pair uh, from the day before, uh, we, we said that uh, we had a sell stop order from the day before uh, at 1.4180 level. So from 1.4180, uh, we shorted to 1.3980, 200 pips, and then we took another uh, buy order for 40 pips, which is uh, also good for now. 
And now uh, we, mm -hmm. we stand ready actually to take another, I think on my uh, opinion, we stand ready to take another a bullish order after this correction is happening, but uh, you, you need to follow the market. I would be hesitant to put a, a stop order for, for this one or sell at this current level because 139, 80, 140 level is more or less a uh, psychological level besides being a major uh, support level overall in, in, in historic time frame, if you go backwards. What do you think, Adamos? Yeah, actually, I also see that uh, we could have a retracement up to 140.56, which is the, the first resistance here. And uh, if we go even to a lower time frame, we see that uh, positioning can happen at uh, 140.16 as well, so 140.16 to 140.56, a short intraday, a long uh, intraday trade could give some profit here from 140.16 to 140.50. And yeah, it's a quick trade with, uh, you take your profit for the day and you wait for the, um, the prevailing longer term trend to revive again. Especially looking at your moving averages, since they are changing their direction, it makes also sense to, to look for that. Yeah. This is the 15 minutes, the short term mm -hmm. uh, time frame. So, yeah, it gives more information on the shorter term time frame. All right. And with that said, uh, I would like to refer to the GBP Canadian, which you know, it was a uh, currency pair that I said about the previous week, that it was around, uh, the previous week was around 197.50. So we see that it has reached 192.62 at the moment. This is the weekly time frame, so we can see the double top time frame. I'm going to pass through that uh, a bit quickly. So on the daily, we see that it went down uh, from 197.50 to 192.00. Uh, 50, so 62, so it's around uh, 500 uh, pips. And uh, over the hourly time frame, it's still pushing on the lower support. So given the weakness that we may see of in the British pound in the following days or in the following week, and uh, I will also follow your USD Canadian analysis to see if there is any further clues on the bearish side of the GBP Canadian. Uh, I believe I still hold the bearish view on the GBP Canadian. And uh, the next one that I'm going to say it's about the Australian dollar USD. So the Australian dollar USD over the over the weekly is extending into a range here, and uh, is bouncing a little bit up. So we have uh, something we have a six-year and ten-month low here as well. Of course, it's a bearish, but we still see a strong support at the 0 0.6896 over the weekly time frame. And then if we look at the daily time frame, we see that it's moving from the bottom towards the uh, top of the range. And the prices have exceeded the 50% level of this range as well. The 50% was at 0 0.7113, and it's above the moving average as well. Okay, moving averages are mixed because of the range. And uh, if we go in the hourly time frame, I think the hourly time frame, the intraday time frame is more interesting on the USD. We can see that uh, is, there is an uptrend. It has touched the moving average 20 and found support there. And also, we saw from previous Fibonacci, it went up to 161.8%. It retained, retraced down to 0 0.7184, which was the previous resistance. And I expect at least a retesting of the 0 0.7248. And if this level is breached, then we may see the Aussie USD um, on the higher resistance at 0 0.7330. The, the retracement happened earlier today, actually, and there was the USD was weak because we had some weaker 
and data that expected uh, in the morning. The construction work done report was at uh, minus 3.6 percent, while it was expected at minus 2.1. And also the wages were uh, they were increased less than what was expected in the previous uh, quarter. Of course, we look at uh, at the coming news tomorrow on U.S. side. And also we'll have on Thursday morning some extra releases for the Aussie, which is the private capital expenditure. Um, any positive release for the Aussie USD uh, could give a boost, and uh, and then the Aussie USD could uh, go up and uh, touch 0 0.72, 48, 48 uh, for uh, retesting the previous for retesting the resistance. Uh, that's all that I wanted to say for the currency pairs today. Jakub, like we did the previous week, we are offering um, a professional account for participants in the webinar. They, the participants have to open and fund a live account with the minimum deposit of $200, and we are giving a lower spread account. Uh, at any point in time, you can go on, check our spreads. They start from 0 0.9 on Euro USD. And uh, for other currency pairs, uh, for GBP USD, 0 0.9 pip and uh, 1 pip for USDN. Um, that's all. Well, yeah, I guess they just, uh, whenever they are opening an account, they just need to refer you that uh, they participated in, yeah. uh, in the webinar with A to Z Forex, correct? Yeah, and uh, they can open an account from A to Z Forex website or fcmforex.com website. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Adamos. So we will uh, we will first look into gold today. Uh, of course, uh, based on the the market volatility, gold is going uh, what gold does, going crazy all the time, especially for the last couple of weeks. And if we really look into uh, gold now, we will see that we have uh, this uh, dynamic. Uh, support and dynamic support, uh, resistance levels that we we have had on this. Uh, uh, it's better to put it like this. So this is the levels uh, levels that we are looking for, uh, as we also discussed yesterday. So we we look into gold and we can see the following: the the valuable metal has gone above two of our moving averages. I use uh, 250 simple moving averages over here. And uh, it's on our time frame. And it has found itself once again a resistance, as we said yesterday, uh, just at 1230 level. So we, we said yesterday that uh, look for the long positions towards 1230 and 1247 level. Uh, that has uh, the first target has been achieved. The next target we are going to be looking for once again, looking for possible long opportunities from. 1220 level, more or less somewhere over here. It's the middle, you could call it pivotal line. Uh, it's 138.2 percent Fibonacci retracement zone, and uh, that's overall a major support slash resistance level for, for us uh, overall. So look for uh, 1220, 1218 level uh, to to go long on this uh, valuable metal, and uh, aim to to get first once again to uh, 1230 level then to 1,240 level. Then, last but not least, we, are, we will be looking for uh, 1,243 level. This is also our 161.8% Fibonacci retracement zone. If we go on to 15-minute time frame, uh, just to make it clear, we can see that the gold has already I don't know what's happening. We had a small uh, connection issue, I guess. Uh, so uh, on 15 minute time frame, we can uh, we can see that gold is gone between two of our moving averages, between uh, 250 moving averages, and uh, basically for if you want to stand on a safe side, you would be looking for uh, once again a touch to 
50 uh, or 200 moving average uh, over here it will be again tw uh, 1218 level more or less so look for it and then look for long opportunities and your stop loss should be around uh, 40 to 60 pips uh, range overall this is for for gold now let's let's look into crude oil crude oil we, we said yesterday that uh, we will be we were shorting basically from the top levels actually we, we said that uh, we will be shorting from uh, 3384 level this is the level that we had uh, from the previous day uh, unfortunately we missed our entry by just two pips differentiation but then uh, yesterday we we caught the the entry uh, once again between uh, 3315 uh, to 3370 level as we we discussed so depending on where you have entered we are short on on crude oil and our target has just been achieved. Our, uh, we were basically uh, shorting down to 3103 level, just over here at 61.8. So at this given moment, we do not really suggest to keep the, the short entries for the fact that we already made more than 200 pips profit on, on uh, crude oil. So uh, look for now a correction wave and uh, possibly look for Basically, let me just change the uh, structure of my screen. What you could also do now is uh, looking for a $30 level, which is 38.2% uh, Fibonacci retracement zone. And uh, from there onwards, it's another 90 pips, uh, or 90 points drop from where we are now. And from there onwards, we can once again look for uh, correction waves. But for now, uh, we are done with the short order that we, we were holding. So stay, uh, stay clear of the market. Don't really just uh, waste the profit that we have made. 210 uh, pips profit in just one day is a, is a great uh, opportunity that people aim to make in, in months. We have done it just in one day since yesterday. And now if you have any question, uh, please feel free to ask. And uh, me and Adamas will be do doing our best to, to answer your questions. What I have noticed is that the latest report from the CFTC about the commitment of trading is that uh, from in the last retracement of the gold, to I saw that the net aggregated long position has been increasing. So the commitment of traders is actually a report that shows the non-commercial trading, which is actually the non-commercial traders are the speculators. And in that case, uh, speculators who report their positions. And that means that they are hedge funds, uh, big institutions. So the, specul the big speculators are accumulating long positioning. And they are building uh, long positions. In ex and that means that they expect another leg up for the gold at least. So w with that said, uh, is that this is an another indication uh, that we may have um, another leg up for the gold. Uh, that's the that's the fundamental backup uh, at least uh, besides the news. Uh, thank you for yeah. the addition. Uh, I, I can I would like to also comment on something that uh, one of one of my business partners has uh, has a share in in a gold mine uh, in Africa. I won't really give the exact uh, name, but they literally stopped selling gold or uh, proceeding with their uh, contracts uh, from uh, 1050, 1080 levels. From there onwards, they stopped uh, basically selling it. And now uh, they, they started accepting orders about 1250 level. And they have already people lined up you know, looking for the contracts to, to get on uh, going. This is a little inside information, but uh, that's the main reason why I won't give the exact name. So it's also another uh, indication that you know the the mines expect as well uh, the price of gold to to hike up towards at least uh, 1250 level. Uh, we have a, a question over here. Uh, what is the difference between WTI the Brent, and the Brent? Brent oil, uh, oil and WTI uh, they are both crude oil. Brent is traded on a London Stock Exchange and WTI is traded in, in New York. That's the main difference. 
So one is for Europe, another one more or less is for, for the US.